Hey friends, this is Quest and Current, and today I have a little story about USB-C breakout boards and why you should be using those and not the ones I bought recently. And this is due to an interesting reason, but before that, let me first explain to you these little breakout boards that I've been using in the past. Not only that one, but also similar ones. I've been using them to be able to connect my devices with Webus and ground, so just the regular five volts that I get from my charger, as well as D plus and D minus, which is responsible for USB 2.0 or one speeds if I want to also connect the data. The breakout board uh, generally has those pins exposed, but the one here also has CC1 and CC2 exposed, and CC1 and CC2, the configuration channels that I used to negotiate the power delivery what, which kind of direction the power is going. So for example, if you connect your phone to your laptop, is your phone going to charge your laptop or the other way around? And with this board, we can pretty easily see what's going on because there are two additional resistors. But before I explain that to you, let's take a look at the other ones I bought. And I obviously bought the cheapest ones because that, that's what I am and that, that's how I work. And you can see, let me break off one of them because they are incredibly cheap, so you don't even get them broken off for you. And they just feature four pins, the VCC and ground and D plus and D minus. And now you would say, yeah, QC, that's enough because I only need power from a device, that's VCC and ground, as well as D plus and D minus for directional um, data for the USB one or two standard. And I don't even need more. But the thing is, if you want to use a breakout board like this, you will not be able to use it with a USB-C to USB-C cable because the charger you're connecting your cable to will not provide power at all. And the reason for that is, you've guessed it, the missing CC pins. So there is a reason why this breakout board has the six pins and this one only has four and this one, the red one, is actually working and the green one is not. So. Those CC pins, like I said, are responsible for power negotiation. So a device that wants to receive power needs to have pulled down resistors. And a device that can supply power needs to have pulled up resistors. That's the easiest way. So there are also more complicated ways where you have power delivery negotiations. But as you can see, this board actually implements those two pull down resistors. And this board does not, and it does not break out the CC pins for you, so you cannot hook them up yourself. And I've even printed out this little drawing where they explain that. So here in the middle, we have our USB-C cable. So the USB-C to USB-C cable with just the CC wires shown. So the V plus and v bus and ground, as well as the C D, D plus and D minus are not shown here. It's just for the power ne negotiation. And each cable has to have at least one of the CC wires so that the charger, which is called the downstream facing port, can use those CC1 and CC2 to pull them up to 5 volts with an internal resistance. And the upstream facing port, uh, this is normally the device you're charging, your phone, um, your action cam, whatever, has to pull down resistors. So they are pulling the CC pins both down to ground. And once you connect your downstream facing port to your upstream facing port via this USB-C cable, one of the CC pins is going to get connected uh, with the CC wire. And so your charger or your supply can actually detect something being connected with the cable. So it doesn't need to supply voltage all the time. That was one of the major downsides with old school power banks that had USB-A connectors. You either had to turn them on with the press of a button or they, they just did this on, off, on, off, on, off, trying kind of thing where they discharged themselves, just trying to detect if a device is connected. With the USB-C connector, we don't need that anymore. So the device can look for the voltage here. And if it drops below a certain value, it knows something has been connected and then it can measure the voltage here and can calculate the resistance here and then calculate what kind of power draw the device expects and, and then it can decide, okay, can I actually supply it or not. And this here, 
the two pull down resistors are the two resistors that we can see here. So that's actually very well implemented. That's exactly what we want to have. And in case we don't want to have a stupid uh, device that can just receive power uh, at five volts or um, three amps or below that, we can desolder those two resistors and then hook our power delivery compatible um, IC or our negotiation device to the CC1 and CC2 pin and actively negotiate with our downstream facing ports or our charger to request more than five volts, for example, to request a higher current or anything else. So this is a good breakout board. This gives us the flexibility to do whatever we'd like. With this board, on the other hand, like I said, we are not having any access to the CC pins and they're not pulled down. So if I connect a device with a USB-C to USB-C cable to my charger and I'm not actually using those resistors, then the CC1 and CC2 pins will be left floating around. So the downstream facing port will not able be able to see that the voltage is actually dropping. It will not be able to detect anything being connected and it will not be able to see what kind of power draw the device um, actually has because it doesn't see the device at all. So with this USB-C breakout board, we can only use USB-A to USB-C cables. So we can, can only use those old school cables that have the USB-A connector on one side and the USB-C connector on the other side. And that's because the USB-A port doesn't actually have that kind of power negotiation. And that's why it needs to supply power all the time. Like I said, a uh, big problem for old school power banks. But this is one of the reasons people hate USB-C so much because it's really counterintuitive because they say, okay, my device is charging with one cable, but not with the other. It works sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't. And they don't know why. It's, it's oftentimes just because someone missed out those two pull down resistors because they wanted to either save probably like two cents during manufacturing, or they didn't know that at all and, and weren't using USB-C to USB-C cables, but just USB-A to USB-C. So um, they didn't actually realize that during testing. And with that, I now have like 20 of those USB-C breakout boards, which I cannot use, or I could only use with USB-A to USB-C cables and, and risk someone connecting a C to C cable to that and, and then t just telling me that I'm an idiot. So um, I will just throw them in the bin and not use them at all, uh, just to be on the safe side. With that, the only thing I can add to that, because the, the picture I've printed from, from the internet also has this, the devices themselves can check if the cable is flipped or not with the CC wire because there's only one CC wire connected in a regular C2C cable unless there's some power delivery negotiations going on. So they can do this unflipped and flipped configuration check. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually used in practice, if, if any device actually does that. I just found it interesting that they included that in the standard. So that there is a way to detect which way around you, you connect your, your USB-C cables. With that, um, I, I'm at the end of, of my, my little talk that I just made out of frustration. Sorry, you had to listen to that. But thanks anyway for listening. Uh, thanks for subscribing. You could do that right now. And a special thanks for the premium subscribers because they allow me to buy stuff like this and buy the, the better breakout boards and talk to you about what is good and what is, what is bad. Uh, so with that, thanks and we'll see each other next week.